Hello, welcome to another video. We have solved many quadratic equations by either factoring or completing the squares or using the quadratic formula. But there are times where the question does not require you to get the answer. They want you to create another quadratic equation with certain characteristics relative to the roots of the one you're given. You are given a quadratic equation and you're told that the roots of this quadratic equation are, just call them alpha and beta, you're supposed to generate another quadratic equation whose roots will be alpha cubed and beta cubed. For those who don't know the strategy, what you would do is you will first find the roots of this quadratic equation, which are going to be nasty numbers, I promise you. Okay? And then you're going to raise them to a power, because if you look at this, minus b, I mean, b squared is less than 4ac, so clearly you'll be getting imaginary numbers. Now, imagine you multiplying an imaginary number three times. I mean, cubing imaginary numbers, it's going to get very weird by the time you do that, and it will take a long time. But you want to know how to do this. The first thing you want to do is understand the, the standard procedure for describing a quadratic equation. So whenever you write a quadratic equation, let's look at this. ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. This is the standard form of a quadratic equation. If you want to know the roots of this equation, even without knowing them, there are two things you can know. Firstly, let's get rid of this a because for us to make this um, conclusion, we have to have the leading coefficient being 1. It cannot be anything other than 1. So the first thing to do is to divide everything by a. You're going to end up with x squared plus b over a um, plus c, sorry, b over ax plus c over a equals 0 over a is still 0. So now we can make draw conclusions here. And what's the conclusion? The sum alpha plus beta is always equal to minus b over a. Alpha plus beta is always equal to minus b over a. And alpha beta, the product of the roots, so the sum of the roots is minus b over a. The product of the roots is always c over a. Always. Let me show you an example. There's a very popular one that we usually get. Let's say we use this example x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals 0. As you can see, this is already 1, which looks like this. So what you have here is we already have it as b over a. What are the roots of this equation? If, let me use minus so it's easier. Okay, minus. If you solve this quadratic, your answers will be 2 and 3. Okay, those are the roots of this quadratic equation. We know that either by factoring, completing the squares, or by using the quadratic formula, we're going to have the roots alpha equals 2, beta equals 3, solving it your way. But assuming you're not expecting to solve it, what we want you to find are alpha plus beta and alpha beta. We know that alpha plus beta using this formula will be minus b over a. What is minus b over a? Well, from here, this is a. a equals 1, b equals negative 5, c equals 6. Okay, so alpha plus beta equals minus b over a. b is negative 5 over 1, which gives us 5. That's the sum of the roots. Clearly, the sum of the roots is 5. And the product of the root, alpha beta, is equal to the product of the root, which is going to be um, 2 times 3, which is c over a. c over a equals 6 over 1, which is equal to 6. 2 times 3, as you can see. So, if you use just this formulas, you know you're going to get the sum of the roots and the product of the roots. And that's the idea behind this. You don't need to know what alpha is or what beta is to be able to do this. Oh, a generalized form. A generalized form. Um, if we have a quadratic equation, it's generally x squared minus the sum of roots plus the 
sum of roots x plus the product of roots equals zero. That is the form of all quadratic equations. Any quadratic equation you see, as long as the leading coefficient is one, this is the quadratic equation, the form of it. It is x squared minus the sum of the roots plus the product of the roots. So generally, let's start here. Generally, you have x squared minus the sum of the roots, alpha plus beta times x, plus the product of the, of, of the roots, which is alpha beta equals zero. This is what you must have. If you ever deal with quadratics, you wanna solve any quadratic equations, you must know that this is it. This is the root. This is the secret. This is always minus the sum plus the product equals zero. And I've shown you with this example that that's it. It is x squared minus the sum of the roots plus the product of the roots equals zero. Remember, this must be one, must always be one for you to make this conclusion. So now, what quadratic equation will have alpha cubed and beta cubed as its root? Well, we can just write it. So the quadratic equation we're looking for, x squared minus the sum of the roots. So it's gonna have these roots, alpha cubed, instead of alpha and beta, it's gonna have alpha cubed plus beta cubed x plus the product, alpha cubed beta cubed equals zero. This is what we're looking for. So it's just our job to know the value of alpha cubed plus beta cubed to also know the value of alpha cubed beta cubed. Once you're able to compute these two, you have your you just plug them in here and you're done. Alpha plus beta, which are these two num values. We don't know what alpha or beta is, but we know alpha plus beta. We can read it from here. It's going to be just negative two. Sorry, alpha plus beta is two, actually. Remember from what I explained, it's going to be it's minus the sum plus the product. That has to be in your head. Let's write it somewhere here. So it's gonna be x squared minus alpha plus beta plus alpha beta equals zero. That's what we're gonna use. So this is two, let's move it closer. And then we have alpha beta is gonna be this, 11. We're done. So the quadratic we need to form is this one, but we need to know what alpha cubed plus beta cubed is so let's look at alpha cubed plus beta cubed now i don't know what alpha alpha is or what beta is so i can't do alpha cubed plus beta cubed but i know how to work with but but i have alpha plus beta what if i cube that let's see what happens uh, we might need to clean this up but let's see what happens alpha squared sorry alpha plus beta cubed will be alpha plus beta times alpha plus beta squared, okay? And this would be the same thing as alpha plus beta times alpha squared plus two alpha beta plus beta squared, okay? If we FOIL this out. Now we can multiply one more time. This is gonna become alpha cubed plus two alpha squared beta plus alpha beta squared. And then we can multiply this, it's gonna be plus beta alpha squared or alpha squared beta, let's arrange it that way. Um, alpha squared beta, this times this will be two, what will this be? It's gonna be two alpha beta squared plus two alpha beta squared. And this is gonna be, this times this is gonna be beta cubed plus beta Ah, that's a long one. Okay, so now we have finally found this. Now we have alpha cubed plus beta cubed, which is what we're looking for, okay? But let's see what the rest will be. Then let's clean up. Two alpha squared beta plus two alpha squared beta plus alpha squared beta is plus three alpha squared beta. Plus, if we put this together with, where is it? With this, it's gonna be plus three alpha beta squared. Okay, um, what, what's common to this and this? We know three is common. We also know alpha beta is common. 
Oh, so this is going to become alpha cubed plus beta cubed plus 3 alpha beta times what's left here is going to be alpha plus beta. Nice. Have you seen now we have here, we have alpha plus beta cubed. So alpha plus beta, we have it. This is what we're looking for. Alpha beta, we have it. Alpha plus beta, we have it. So you can easily find your alpha cubed plus beta cubed from this expansion. So now, if I want to get this, which is this guy, I can just subtract this from this side. So this is going to be equal to alpha plus beta cubed minus 3 alpha beta times alpha plus beta. And that's it. Now I can erase all of these, but you see the work you have to do when you see it. You get weirder uh, demands, you might get alpha cubed minus one, and then beta cubed minus one. If you get things like that, you still have to go through all these algebra to be able to get it. And you have to show your work. So now let's clean this up because we've got the expression that we need to get alpha squared plus beta squared. Generally, the product is always easy. What's the toughest part is usually the sum. Let's plug in the numbers. What we're going to have will be a plus b cubed, which is this cube. We know a plus b is 2, so it's 2 cubed minus 3 times, what is alpha beta? 11. And what is alpha plus beta? 2. So you see, what we have is 8 minus 66. And that gives us, um, that's going to be negative 58. Okay, so let's find our alpha cubed beta cubed. Well, this one I said is always easy because it's alpha beta everything cubed, which is going to be um, 11 cubed. 11 cubed is 121 times 11, right? And that's 1331. So we can say this is equal to, so equation, The equation we're looking for is x squared minus negative 58 plus 1331 equals 0, which implies we got x squared plus 58x. Oh, there's x here. Always put your x here. x plus plus 1331 equals zero. This is the quadratic equation whose roots are alpha cubed and beta cubed. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.